It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? My name is Jake Shadow. This is a podcast about reality television and friendship in which I ask my best friend Thomas Powell if he did indeed watch a certain reality show. Hey, Thomas, how are you doing today? Jake, I'm doing uh, just swell. Uh, it's a fine uh, Monday night. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, surprisingly temperate January conditions. You know, it was like 35 degrees today. It's not bad. Above freezing. I mean, we're almost into February. That's pretty good. Also, this time last year, it was, um, uh, I believe, like negative 25 degrees, and we got like a foot and a half of snow, and I literally couldn't leave my house it's good. for several Actually, days. Actually, winter is good, and everybody loves it. Yeah. So this is a welcome uh, change from that. I was getting worried because uh, the, the previous year's winter was similarly mild up until that point in January, and then we got absolutely, like, apocalyptic conditions. You like, so I was worried that was going to happen. You you don't love the snow, but you do like a mild winter. You just like, like sweater weather, right? That's kind of your jam. I'm like a spring fall guy, so if I can get, like, 30-something degree weather with no snow in the winter, like, I'm golden, man. I can deal with that, no problem. I, pre- I prefer that to, like, really hot summer weather, honestly. I agree but also i do just love summer i love just kicking back on the beach being a chill bro this is a podcast about having a great summer so it is we say it literally every week yeah um i am going i'm gonna have a good summer next weekend because i'm going to the sin city that's right cincinnati cincinnati going down to cincinnati for the weekend the big apple cincinnati (laughs) The city that never sleeps because they all have horrible indigestion from the spaghetti chili that they eat. I am going to probably have to talk to the mayor about that. (laughs) Yeah, you're going down there on a fact-finding mission about Skyline Chili. My sister texted me like, so what's your plan for Cincinnati? Like, when can we meet up and go get lunch or whatever? That kind of text. And I was like, well, I'm pretty open. Forgot to mention, I do have to talk to the mayor about their spaghetti chili. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why you people do this to yourselves. It seems like and a, defend it. It seems like a bad idea, uh, and I really, it really unnerves me every time I think about it. Sky- I wish that, like, it would be one thing if Skyline Chili was like the Malort of of Cincinnati, mm-hmm. where it was just a thing they hazed outsiders with. Well, that's but, not like, that's not what Malort like is. It. Malort is good, oh, no, actually. People, yeah, sorry, yeah, people love Malort. It's, Malort's good, See, people like it. See, it tastes bad to tourists, because they don't know the true yeah, nature of a, Malort. You gotta of be a true, true Chicago. Chicago ri- yeah, yeah you, you don't know that... It's actually a good way to test whether you're a true Chicago... Uh, resident you right know. right uh you because to... if it tastes good to you that means that you're you're a true chicago do, do chicago people call themselves in this in the vein of like a new yorker do they have something they call themselves like a chicagoan yeah they call a okay <laughs> we... that's what i was going for but it just doesn't sound natural we love chicago it's uh it's my favorite town i did say on instagram recently chicago what a town <laughs> Uh, Instagram's fun. We all love it. Uh, Thomas, you know who's on Instagram? Probably a lot of people from this show. Did you watch Survivor Heroes vs. Villains last night? Jake, how many people from this show are on Instagram? I don't know. There's 21 people on the cast. I'd say at least 11 of them are on Instagram. (laughs) Alright. I'll take you at your word on that one. I'm not gonna look that up. What do you think this is? Twitter? It's not I, I wish like there was a split second where I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna hold his feet to the fire this one I was like I'm not looking up every single yeah, person on exactly Instagram that one takes this. so long <laughs> it's not worth my time um I feel like I've seen Tyson's posts floating around probably Sandra also so that's two people at least I can't imagine Jeff Probst doesn't have an Instagram he's gotta yeah Anyway, this episode was called Survivor History. What are your thoughts on that title? Uh, truly, they did make Survivor History in many ways on this episode. Some of them good, some of them not so good. I started this episode, saw that was the title, and was like, wait, is this just one of those recap episodes? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a dumb person. Survivor clip show. 
Uh, it was, in fact, a real show, though. Uh, it first aired on op- April 15th, 2010. Thomas, did you get your taxes in? April 15th? That's, te- that's tax day. I don't know that I was employed at that time. Well, why would you not have been employed? How old were you in April 15th, 2010? Well, the thing is, I would have been doing my taxes for 2009, and uh, I was in school for most of the year in two different ways there. Sounds like a fucking nerd. And I I believe that I did not get my my first job um, until, I want to say winter or spring, Mm. my freshman year of college at the school, in what was, I would say, still the worst job that I've ever had. What job was that? Uh, that would be, I was attending Denison University Ooh. in, in scenic, uh, not, not Sin City. This isn't, uh, <laughs> this isn't the land of the spaghetti chili. Uh, although I believe they do have a skyline chili at the Columbus airport, which is the, the that, that is the, the notable Ohio city that Granville is close to. It's about 30 minutes North of Columbus, mm-hmm. but, um, I was working for the Denison Annual Fund. Oh, which is yeah. Didn't you have to a call? Job where you call alumni yeah. and ask them to donate money to a school uh, that tuition is like $40,000 a year for. Um, the way that you sell that to people is you're like, oh, well, they have really good, uh, you know, financial aid, which, you know, I mean, they do, but at the same time, they also set the tuition that high. So it's like it's like a way that they can pat themselves on the back for slightly mitigating the exorbitant amount of money they're charging right. you. So it's basically a way for you to be like, I at the time was like, I you know I've got like a seventeen thousand dollar a year scholarship and financial aid from them, and that wouldn't be possible without the annual fund. But also like asking anybody for money, for a sc- it's also a school that has like a ridiculous endowment i don't remember what the amount was but like i I, the whole time i was like this is bullshit and also the way that they do it is super shameless because they the point where i knew i was not cut out for it was um because like if i was just like being nice because my whole thing was like i'll ask people for money but i'll be like nice about it i'm not gonna be pushy and uh yeah they won't let you do the job like that um we were told to um we were told to not phrase asking for money as asking them for something, but as offering them an opportunity, which is some real psychotic shit. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I ghosted that job. I did not formally quit. So how old would you have been on April 15th, 2010? Man, I would have been 18 years old if I'm if I'm doing doing the math right there. Well, you know a lot about math based on your alumni job, from what I understand. Yeah, I, yeah, I uh, I, I certainly do. Um, <laughs> also, the one more thing I'll add about that was <laughs> this is just an interesting background. Another wrinkle that made it really bad is like all those conditions were already really bad, as I'm sure you can imagine. Mm-hmm. But um. The other thing that sucked about it... Also, I was making like $8 an hour doing Gross, this. It's not enough money. The the, uh, the other thing that sucked about it was... Um, I... Uh, years before I attended that university, there had been like a big sort of on-campus like fraternity. Like there, there were some... It was kind of a like a party school for... Uh, but also like a like a rich private school. It was like a bad combo, mm-hmm. and uh, they kind of came in and cleaned it up. They uh, they got rid of um, they had fraternities and sororities, but they weren't residential. They were just organizations, mm. which is good. Uh, and uh, they worked on making it a more prestigious like academic institution. Uh, but the, uh, the problem with that is all of the people that attended the, uni- or the, the fraternities and sororities, uh, and I believe it was the nineties that they got rid of them. Maybe it was a little bit later than that, but we would specifically call different graduating class years. And so if you got one of the years right around the time that they cut off or before oh. for people, and you got anyone that was in a fraternity or sorority, uh, 
they uh, would never donate to you, and they would yell at you about it. Cool, because cool folks. Yeah, it would, because they were not happy about the uh, what what was done to the, their precious Greek life. So, uh, yeah, it was fun getting yelled at about a thing I didn't know existed before I went there uh, as an eighteen year old. Like, yeah, I uh, I run things around here, and uh, when I was like six years old, I I made the call on on no more. Uh, no more Greek life on campus. So, you know, it was, uh, it was just another, it, it's bad enough. Try having, I always appreciated there were people that kind of knew the, the ask thing was bullshit and would just kind of make jokes to you about it. And mm-hmm. I would be like, ah, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's what they tell us to say. Uh, but, uh, there's one thing with like debasing yourself with that shit. And there's another thing when you get yelled at while doing it. Dude, I know. I'm so happy to be not, in a customer service job as much oh, anymore. Oh, rough, man. Man. It was one of those things that had an auto dialer too, so you just did not have a minute to yourself, and it was just constantly calling people. Should have done, like, uh, sorry to bother you. Yeah. Become friends with Danny Glover. Yeah, really. Uh, I would have been 19 years old when this episode aired. How many viewers do you think it got? You you did really say, well last week. You got both of them I last did, week. I I'm I'm nervous about following up on that mm-hmm. performance. Um, I will say twelve million. It's twelve point three million. Hell yeah! You're doing, you're doing well I've got at this, this game. Thing down. Uh, we start off on the villains tribe. Jerry asks Danielle if she's the next target, but Danielle assures her that she is not. So Jerry decides that she is sticking with that group. Uh, Russell doesn't trust Sandra or Courtney and says that one of them will be next. Then at the reward challenge, the heroes still assume there's a women's alliance in the villains tribe. Everybody is paired Love up it. with someone. You're, yeah, right. Uh, somebody's paired up with somebody from the opposing tribe. And the winning tribe receives. You remember, Thomas? What the reward uh, was for this yes, challenge? Yes, Jake. I, I remember well. I gasped audibly when they announced what it was and yelled, The Stake Authority! Yes, indeed. The Stake Authority the is back stake in authority charge. The Stake Authority is in effect. Friendship with Applebee's is over. Now the Stake Authority yeah. is back in charge. I was really sad that he did not call it the Stake Authority in a way that made you assume it was a thing. <laughs> well, this that is what made call it, a it thing. ever. I call it that now all the time. I do too, but that would, they only used it on, uh, what season was it that they had? Was it, uh... I think it was David versus Goliath? David versus Goliath, yeah. I want to say. But that, they did, they used, they don't, that was the first time I heard anyone call it that. They, uh, they didn't use it in this one. They just called it Outback Steakhouse. He unfortunately did not say the Steak Authority, which, uh... Yeah, nobody uttered the word Steak Authority. He did, however, say the phrase, all the fixins. So he did say all the fixins in reference to the baked potatoes they had, yeah. and I did like that. Yeah, he 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 heard our complaint last week when he said just fixins. Yeah, you got to specify how many fixins. If we're, we're getting fixins, here. I want them what all percentage or of none fixins, of them. <laughs> what percentage of fixins am I receiving? Uh, Sandra loves the Outback Steakhouse. Uh, she says that she and her husband went there. Tw- tw- twice a week before he was deployed to Afghanistan. Yeah, damn, they didn't they didn't even have to like pay anybody to get this kind of they were just getting free advertising. Yeah. Uh, you, the army, you mean? Well, yeah, that too, but uh I'm sure they paid I'm sure they paid to have like this thing happen at all, but like Sandra was really selling it for them mm-hmm. without you know, actually being in a, you know, like paid to do so do you think survivor just sent sandra and her husband to like seven different restaurants twice a week every week so that no matter what sponsorship they got for this season she could just still be like i went to i went to sonic twice a week with my husband before i went to yeah. afghanistan Sa- <laughs> sandra ate uh 40 different steaks in 30 days the, the reckoning is coming <laughs> sandra is really survivor's papa john <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but for steak, uh, Colby and Jerry are paired up, and there's a cute little flirtation between the two of them. And then immediately after that, Rupert is paired with Sandra, and he tells her that he loves her, and then she just rolls her eyes at him. It's very good. I like I yep. like this a lot. Um, one thing I did not love about this challenge, a lot of feet shots. 
A lot of shots of yeah, people's feet. Yeah, we had feet. a lot of people's feet, and their feet are not looking good. No. Because they've been on the island for a little while. No, I didn't like also, that at all. Also, Rupert broke his toe. Rupert and broke his toe. we had to look toe. at that. And that wasn't even the worst one. <laughs> no. There were some gross-ass toes in this challenge. Yeah. <laughs> at least we had a little more we, shoes. Many, yeah. The, the sweeties were out, and more importantly, their feeties were out. I don't like it. The villains won. Uh... And their most treacherous plan of all was making us all look at their feet. Yeah. <laughs> Twisted. Like true villains. Um, at the reward ch- uh, the reward that they won, Sandra says she wishes her husband were there uh, with her at Outback Steakhouse. But he's got to do his job and she's got to do what she has to do out here on Survivor. That's a good little uh, snippet. What are they called? Yeah. Talking head? No. Talking head? Mm. No, when it's just like a phrase, a really brief phrase. <sighs> that people... Uh, sound bite. Thank you. It's a good sound bite. I, is all I, I knew say. you'd get it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Poverty finds a clue to an idol and shows it to Danielle. She says that Russell doesn't need to know about this one. Poverty. Pretty, uh, pretty good player, you might say. Yeah, this was uh, two. We got two very good Parvati episodes this this week. I mean, you could say that about any episode Parvati is on. To be honest, I, sp- I suppose that is true. Parvati's not in bad episodes. Uh, at the Heroes Beach, JT is fine with missing the steak reward because he's had over a thousand steaks in his time. That's a lot of steaks. I feel like. How many steaks do you think you've eaten in your entire life? If you had to put a number on it. I would say probably like 200. I would guess less than 100 for me. I'm not a huge steak really? fan. Yeah, I don't I don't really love steak. Uh, how are we talking like steak does steak being in something count no. or are we talking just straight up like a, a steak? A straight up steak, a normal T-bone or whatever. Or yeah, or whatever. I, I, I would say probably Several hundred is my is okay. my answer. Not a thousand though. I I would not say it's in the the quadruple digits, but at the same time, how old was Colby at that time? Because I you know I'm playing catch up right now. Oh uh, well, this was JT who said it, and he would have been probably about my age. Honestly, yeah, I think he was also, like twenty. No, he yeah he would have been in his. I think it was like twenty six or twenty seven. Okay, I think yeah, he was like so 24 never mind. When he won. Also, when I say I'm playing catch up with steak, I don't mean I'm putting it on there like Boo. the orange president. Boo! Bad one. Bad joke. Like the big, like the big orange president that we all that we have. Like that big Cheeto. I'm not, I'm not putting Kofifi on my steak. Hey, hey! Did you hear the Cheetos are coming out with a new flavor? It's impeachment Cheetos. Oh, mm. funny stuff. The, uh, Cheeto factory called and they said they're all out of you. <laughs> Hey, the, the Seinfeld company called. They have more jokes now. It's a pretty good one, too. What I did off of yours. Uh, JT says that if they win the next immunity challenge, he's got a plan. Which was very funny. I, yeah. Uh, he's very excited about the plan. And, uh, boy, we'll get into that. I like that Colby immediately made fun of him. <laughs> Yep. Like, even though Deservedly so. Colby has not won and JT has definitely won this game, Colby still realized that JT's an idiot. Yep. Uh, he says that this next immunity challenge will guarantee the finals. Uh, and that he is betting his life on a merge. That's some interesting phrasing from James Thomas. You know? I think that's his name. Uh, his plan is to give the idol to Russell and have him vote out poverty. And then he writes Russell a letter explaining the plan. Oh, man. Yeah. This whole fucking thing. Yeah, it's incredible. One of the worst, maybe the worst move I've ever seen on Survivor. I just, I don't, I still don't understand it. Like, these... The same with Tyson's move earlier. Like, why did you do that? It would have been so easy to not do that. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's it's very funny. I can't. It's been ten years. And I still can't stop thinking about this. 
<laughs> Over, it's really something. It's so funny. Over on the villains tribe, Poverty and Danielle find an idol. Good for them. And then there's an immunity challenge. They have to carry puzzle pieces through a bunch of obstacles in the water. Colby and Russell are the last two people on their respective platforms. So Colby tells him the plan. Then Russell agrees to the plan and then turns to production and shakes his head in disbelief. Did you see that? Yep. <laughs> I just, I have to imagine the producer was just like, they're really doing this. <laughs> Like, they're really going through with this. Granted, I have to remember, JT hadn't seen Russell's game going into this season. So, you know, you can cut him some slack there. But also, but, like, why would you ever give up him? him? Yeah. You've, I, you, it's not hard to tell what his deal is. He's just a good country boy. Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> well, the thing is, it was all that deal. The whole thing was centered around the extremely faulty premise. They were so sure that there was an all women's alliance, right? Even though none of them ever gave any indication to that fact. It's like, yep, there's more girls than boys absolute, now. They assumed it, and that that created the conditions for him to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I think. Russell and Parvati reading the letter together is oh. maybe my favorite scene in i've ever seen on survivor it's so good yeah so while everybody's shaking hands after the challenge jt gives russell an idol incredible then over on the hero's beach everybody is excited that russell has their idol and at one point rupert says now is your chance to prove you're not a villain why does rupert care so much about this i i don't know they they all come off like just complete dullards from this whole thing. Uh, um, over on the villains, yes, Parvati and uh, Russell read JT's letter aloud. It's very funny. Uh, Sandra and Courtney know it's one of them. Russell's alliance agrees to vote out Courtney. It's just beautiful it was it yeah it, it was a bummer to see courtney get voted out just because i feel like she did later like it was just one of those people that is a casualty of of being outside of an alliance yeah. and didn't really do anything to deserve getting eliminated yeah it's you know but she she was excited to be on the jury from her you know exit thing so yeah. she she at least got that i'm bummed out that we haven't seen her come back since this because yeah, she's I I enjoyed I enjoyed her on the season. I liked having her around. Her initial season's apparently very good too, but I either haven't seen it or don't remember it because it was on in that era of Survivor when um I was a child. Um, where were we? Oh, Tribal Council. Russell says that he, Poverty, and Danielle all really trust each other, and that's why they're still there. Jerry points out that she was never in anyone's alliance, and then they vote, and everybody votes for Courtney. It's, you know... Of all the people I could have gone, I was least upset about it being Courtney. Well, I guess if we lost Danielle, I wouldn't be too heartbroken, but she's kind of necessary for the Russell Poverty thing. So... You know, Sandra doesn't need Courtney. No. So... In the grand scheme of things. Could have been worse. Uh, the second episode we watched this week was called Going Down in Flames. How did you feel about this title? Pretty good. I liked it. Uh, first aired on April 22nd, 2010. How old would you have been, Thomas? Oh, man. Um, or if you would rather, I, do you want to tell me more about your alumni yeah, job? Yeah, what other things Other things about my, the, my freshman year job I hated, can I tell you? Um... No, I uh, I would have been 18. I would have been 19 years old. I think at this point, I was... Mm, where was I working? I was at Central at this point. So, I don't know that I had a job at this point either. Maybe I did. Wait, 2010. When did we start college? 2009? I, <laughs> yeah, so this would have been this would have been spring of your freshman year. Okay, so I was like, 
I pretty much had already, the senioritis had already set in. I just hadn't realized it yet. That's what my life yeah, is yeah. dealing with at the moment. Uh, how many viewers do you think this got? I'm going to say 11 million. 11.9 million. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Closest well, without going over. You we're got not, it. We're not, yeah, we're not rounding up. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the heroes are begging for a merge, and then they find a chest, but not the key to open it. Meanwhile, the villains find a map and a key. Uh, and then they merge, and Russell believes he's the only one with an idol in the game. Russell, buddy. Incorrect. Party calls Danielle her lady-in-waiting. Have you ever heard this phrase, lady-in-waiting? It sounds like a real thing, but I also couldn't tell you what the original meaning is. I had the same thought, so I made sure to put it in my notes so I could look it up later. It's basically just the queen's assistant... <laughs> I see. It's like a very high-ranking queen's assistant, apparently. Uh, when JT sees the villains walk up, he sees Parvati and Russell, so he assumes that Parvati had also played an idol. What is is this an example of confirmation bias? Uh, perhaps. This is like one of those phrases that I vaguely understand. You're throwing a lot of those out here right now. Look, I'm going to start... Talking about law of averages or something like that? <laughs> Let's get your roommate in here to talk about the law of averages, yeah, yeah, his Patrick favorite would topic. Love, Patrick, would Patrick would love that conversation. <laughs> uh, they all feast. Uh, well, trying to decide on the tr new tribe name, Jerry suggests all villains, and Rupert gets really mad. <laughs> <laughs> As if anyone would ever paint <laughs> Rupert as a villain. The more mad he gets about being labeled a villain, the more villainous he becomes. <laughs> Absolutely. Ain't that just how it goes? Survivor is just like real life. Uh, live long enough, hero, villain. Rupert gets it. Poverty knows she's on the outs. Russell promises JT and Rupert that he is with them. Why would you ever believe that? Uh, you know, I don't have an answer for you on that one. <laughs> Sandra tells Rupert not to trust Russell. Amanda tells Poverty that she is a target. Uh, so Parvati shows Amanda the idol, and Amanda says in a talking head that if Parvati makes it to the end, she will win again. Do you know how far each of them get in this game, Amanda and Parvati? I don't. I will not tell you, then. Do, who do you think makes it further, Amanda or Parvati? I'm gonna say Parvati makes it further. Do you have a guess on how far you think she makes it? I think I'm going to guess that they got they get eliminated in consecutive episodes. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'll tell you this. Parvati, of all multi-season people, has the best average placement of any player. Okay. I think it's... I think her average is fourth place or something like that. Pretty good. She's pretty good at this game. Um, it, the immunity challenge, Russell explains that their new tribe is... Yin Yang, and he says it means good and evil. And I did not look good that and evil. up, but I feel like that's an oversimplification. <laughs> it it is, but I also don't expect you know. Yeah, it's, he got his point across. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, everybody has to hang on to a pole for as long as possible. It's fine. Uh, it comes down to poverty and Danielle, and poverty steps down, which makes everyone suspicious. Sandra says that she wants Russell out right now but she is stuck with him for the time being. Then back at camp, Russell gives Parvati JT's idol, so now she has two. Amanda is worried about Parvati's one idol and tells her to play it, but Parvati thinks she is lying. It's honestly, watching Parvati play this game is fascinating every time, no matter how many times I've yeah. seen her play. It's just like... She's just so on top of it every time. She's she's like a, a terrifying social player because she's very charming and like calm, mm -hmm. but also very conniving. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody I've heard talk, everybody I've heard who has been like interviewed about playing with her says the same thing, which is like, yeah, everybody knows she's a threat, but she's also like a very positive, calming person to have in your life. So no one wants to get rid of her. She's just yeah, got that effect it's, on people. It's, it, it's tough to like somebody and know that they're going to screw you over, but also like, oh, I kind of want to 
have them around because I like having them around. Exactly. I, it'll be really interesting to see how that plays in in Winners at War. Um, let's uh, let's let's get into before the wildest charitable council of all time. Let's talk about these wildlife shots. Alive. Wild. I used it twice. The word. <laughs> I don't know that I would call it the wildest tribal council of all time. I um, would say for the I would say for the time being it up, was up to that point possibly, yeah. but I would say uh, the um, the one where someone got eliminated without a vote being cast for them is probably still the craziest yeah, that's one I've ever seen. Up. That's stupid. Remember how Sari was in this season that we're watching currently? Also, yeah, yeah she got out early. I just I remembered that this week. I was like, oh, that's right. How different would this season be? If Ceri's plan had worked instead of Russell's. Yeah. Would be interesting. Uh, so we haven't ever seen Russell and Ceri play together. Is that right? That's pretty in- interesting. We should That should happen. Well, I mean, we have. Well, they were, well, they the were on opposite tribes, and so they never interacted. Before she got voted out. I suppose that's true. Okay. Anyway, here's the wildlife shots. There's a whale, a rat, a blackbird, another bird, and a skink. I didn't look any of them up because I forgot. Let's talk about this tribal council that's not the wildest tribal council of all time because crazier shit has happened in the ten years since then. Okay. At the time, though, Thomas, okay, look at it through context clues. It's pretty good. Um, at the tribal council, they, according to my notes, fight over bananas. Um, yeah, they do fight over bananas. Um... Russell is complaining about how the villains are always eating all the ripe bananas. But Russell is a villain. Not Russell, sorry, uh, Rupert. Oh, of course. A lot of guys on this season with the first name starting with R. Rob, Russell, true. Rupert, Randra. Yeah. Anyway... Russell says this vote will dictate the rest of the game. Parvati believes she's a target. Colby implies that she's not a target. Colby, I don't understand what his play was here. He was yeah, like, I don't really maybe she shouldn't believe she's a target. Maybe there's a bigger threat. I was like, what are you... We're not children. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what he was going for here. I don't either. Uh... Maybe he's going to switch over to their side. I don't remember that happening, though. Uh, They vote. Parvati pulls out an idol and gives it to Sandra, and then another one and gives it to Jerry. Jerry had received five votes, as did JT. And then Russell turns around and tells Parvati that she's got some explaining to do, and she just says, secret. It's great. Uh. It's great. I love it. I love Parvati. I love this scene. It's still one of my favorite Travel councils of all time. JT getting eliminated by his own idol is incredible. Mm, chef's kiss. In, ter- in terms of survivor gods, that's a good move they made. <sighs> Fucking dumbass. Yeah. Remember when Game Changers was on and I was like, JT actually sucks at Survivor. He just got lucky. Yep. This is why. <laughs> I've been waiting yeah, that for was, this. <laughs> there were there were a couple things that we didn't talk about when uh, he handed the thing over. Russell had one of my favorite lines in anything of Survivor when he was th- talking about, you know, like it was nice that they had the, all the interview where he's like, "You don't give Russell hands an idol. Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. But he goes at one point. He goes, "JT basically just handed me a million dollars. I guess he could afford to do it." Yeah, it's very good. It's and, and also Parvati at one point was like, this guy won? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he was on, his original season had Coach on it, too. Oh! And Fishbach. We, we also have not talked yes. about Coach showing up in a fucking kimono on the jersey. Oh, yeah, of course! Was that at all surprising? <laughs> No, but I I did still have a big reaction to it. Like it felt God. very him, but I I was I saw him and I was like, he is not wearing a fucking kimono. But of course he's wearing a kimono because he's coach. Um, it was it's so stupid, but in like a very distinct coach way. Absolutely, coach has got to be him. He can't be anybody else. Uh, hey, I've got a mug that says "Be yourself." Everybody else is taken. You know who said that? Who? I don't remember. It says on the mug. <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Abraham I think it Lincoln. was Oscar Wilde, actually. 
I, I, I think it was the wasn't that an Oscar Wilde? Quote? It probably isn't something that he said. It's probably a misattributed quote. I mean, there's a lot of those with Oscar. Yeah, it was Wilde. actually Jesus who said it. Yeah, that's why I said Abraham Lincoln. It's like, uh, did Abe definitely said that? You know what I learned today about Abraham Lincoln? What? He was a champion wrestler in his day. You didn't know that? No, why would I know that? I knew that as a fucking child. Okay, well, I knew he was the 16th president, not the 18th. Yeah, no, he did wrestling. He did do wrestling. Sucks he wasn't in the Rumble last night. Shame, yeah. I Shame feel like they really missed an opportunity. Um, did you see- So what you're saying is that it is a shameful thing. <laughs> too many limes, too many limes. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you see what JT said in his uh, exit interview? Uh, I think I was half listening. What did he say? Remind me. Um, well, basically, he just advises you to not ever trust women. Oh, yeah! Why, why that was his takeaway. The woman's not the one who screwed you over, dude. That was you. <laughs> and another man. And then, I guess in the grand scheme of things, a lady was involved. The, the but... takeaway is that from this is not that you shouldn't trust women it's that you shouldn't trust anyone as the movie Jim Cotta and the wrestler Stone Cold Steve Austin both taught us have we watched Jim Cotta yet for this dumb podcast yes do you want to do it again sometime (laughs) I mean look I'm always happy to watch Jim Cotta (laughs) it's my favorite movie starring Jim Cotta I love it it's just so it's just so good (laughs) it's my favorite thing um Mom's thoughts. Mom's not watching Heroes vs. Villains, so we can skip that. Challenge Junk. Challenge not on. But Thomas, have you watched The Circle yet? No. Missing out. Everybody's talking about it. I'm sure Everybody's it's good. Everybody's talking about I The just... Circle. I did, you know. I, did send, I did fill out the interest form for season two, so if I disappear for three to six did. weeks in the next year, you know why. I'm on The Circle, baby. If you ever actually get on a reality show, I will be shocked. Why? And you've just been trying. I I just think the fact that you want to be on one just makes me think that you never will be, and so I will be surprised if you ever get there. The Circle, I think, is the perfect reality show for me, because I'm too old for Real World now, and also Real World is barely ever on anymore. Um, How many times did you apply for Real World? I think once at most. I don't know if I actually actually went through with it. Uh, Survivor, I don't know if they're ever going to pick me because of the beatus. Yeah. Fucking, fucking destroy, if not for that. Uh, and the circle, I don't think that's a proclivity. Another word I'm not sure I'm using correctly. Yeah, you no. But here's what I will say. I am honest and I am genuine and people seem to really like me on the internet. Honest, like... A certain Abe. former president. Like Abe, the wrestling president. <laughs> yep. That's me. Use the hashtag Yaz Queen for the year of Sandra. We're coming up on the last one. We've only got two more weeks of Heroes vs. Villains. And then it's Crazy. Winners at War time. What a year of Sandra it's been. It's been the year of Sandra. That almost worked. It's, I feel like whenever I try to do that, it's always one or two syllables too long. Yep. And maybe I just shouldn't try to do songs anymore because they're always bad (laughs) if you want to follow us on twitter and uh rank me first in the circle you can follow the podcast at dywsln uh or me at jake scheidel you can follow me at tom not tom review us on apple podcasts and um I'm going to Sin City next week, so I'll check in next week's episode with all the sins I got into. Oh, all right. When I have a great summer. Um, Yep, deuces. I wish you could swim Like the dolphins Like dolphins can swim
Hooray! We did it!